Hi, you already know what it is. My name is Lays. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing the unique equipment evaluation. And so absolutely no stalling Steven here today. I am only a speedrunner, Steven. And so before we kick things off, I do want to mention that there are a couple of rumors floating around, you know, where we might be getting the batch seven UEs before the next CB. And certainly in this video, I will address that. However, to kick things off, let's start talking about the lovely Jita. So Jita for her UE, she is going to be able to restore her own TP by 200 and a global restore to everybody else by 100. To be honest, I don't know if there is actually a UE that is better than this one today. And so that is already very, very telling right? You're going to want to craft it high priority and level high priority. Miss Nyara's 100% got it right here, but I don't think there is anybody who doesn't really know that. However, if you guys are down bad on the heart shards, then I would say at least just unlock it, but don't really level it because you see the 5 TP gain. Do remember that this TP boost is just allowing her to UE more. The real cracked part of it is in the effect. And so the note here, CB and PVE mainly completely agreed, and she is certainly going to be relevant for an entire year which is honestly that's gonna like exceed the shelf life of a lot of different units all right so moving on we have monica who has a high craft priority and the reason for this is because when she uses her buff at the very start everybody on the team used to get a 150 attack all attack buff as well as an action speed buff of plus 50 percent for 20 seconds and so with the ue she now gives everybody 1200 attack and a hundred percent action speed which is honestly utterly ridiculous Generally speaking, however, her use case has not really changed. She is certainly going to be a PvP powerhouse. Very much an enabler, kind of like, okay, if I want to kill the enemy before they can kill me, I'm gonna take Monica. Just things like the Mage Melt, you've got the Turbo Susana, you got like all of the Turbo ones. The action speed is just like too insanely valuable. And the only other unit that kind of gives something like that, I think is Kokoro. However, on the flip side, aside from PVP, there are some use cases in which Monica can be used for carry over. So I'm talking when you overkill a boss, you then get to like maybe go into like 50 seconds for the next boss, something like that. Just by looking at this effect and thinking about what is really required for those extra little bits of overkill, it's pretty obvious why Monica is good. However, there are most certainly a lot of cases, most cases actually where she, like you don't really use Monica in CB. All right, so next we've got Kuka. This is an interesting one because for Kuka, she for a lot of people starts becoming like an unkillable mage tank, especially with the release of like all of these mages like Kasumi and then you've got like all those like magic defense down units with the UEs. I'm talking Akari, I'm talking Skiaru, I'm talking Kiaru, UE, I'm talking Yori UE, I'm talking Misaki, I'm talking Hatsune, like Kuka, she's kind of getting burnt down pretty fast. However, with her UE, she is going to be able to heal herself by 20%. She is also getting a P defense buff of like 30, but I don't know if this like 30 P defense is enough to call her like a great main tank. But then again, on the other hand, she is also healing herself, which is a generalist thing. Okay, you know what? I agree. She is going to be a great main tank. So on the other hand, for PvP, of course, you guys already know her. She is certainly always paired with your girl Miyako, and hopefully with her UE, she can stop more mages. Now, in terms of level priority yes it is high but like you'll see why i am kind of hesitating to say that later on like out of all of these units kuka's ue maxing out her ue is probably the highest priority because the stats of her ue are actually bonkers 53 to p defense 68 to m defense and 90 hp boost which means every time she heals she's going to be healing for even more so yeah to be honest if i could only pick one character to max out in terms of their ue it would actually be kuka however you all already know especially if you cb players kuka doesn't have overly much utility in the cb and so the craft priority medium completely agreed all right and so next we've got yuki who has a craft priority of medium and low level i would say that uh, yuki is kind of like mid high but again this is certainly only like a pvp thing so on her ue she gets a charm charms for eight seconds and this is like really incredibly good because it's essentially a disable so for her natural skill one where she doesn't have the 
the UE, she just blinds them. However, a unit can technically still get their UBs off if they are blinded. Whereas if we're talking some hard CC like charms as well as stuns and binds, those units affected by the hard CC are essentially cucked for 8 seconds and a lot can happen in 8 seconds. However, I think the assessment is pretty right like in terms of the rest of these units. Yuki, number 4, yeah, I, I would agree. However, absolutely do not level the UE up at all. Well, like maybe go to level 30 or something, kind of similar to Monica. You just really want the effect and then let's move on. And so next we've got Ayane, which is an interesting one. So she is going to get a longer stun as well as some extra single target damage. And then on top of that, she is going to be debuffing the enemy's action speed by 20% for 10.5 seconds. Honestly, I really like Ayane in PvP. There was actually a period of time where I couldn't find the counter to a comp. And I can't exactly remember. Maybe if I find it, I'll put it up there or something. But TLDR, Ayane was the answer. And that was really surprising. However, outside of that, you're probably just going to be using her for her cancels. So when Ayane UBs, she is actually able to cancel some boss mechanics, especially in CB. So with a rating of low and low, yeah, I agree. And then lastly, we've got Suzume, Suzumeme over here. Unfortunately, she's okay. She's just outclassed in everything she does. She doesn't really do anything like exceptionally well. With her UE, her AOE damage goes up by 55% and she is also debuffing or their all defense by 35. Like, don't get me wrong, it's good, it's decent. However, in terms of like priority for the grand scheme of things, Susume, I'm big sorry. And so with that, that is kind of going to wrap up the batch 6 of the UEs. Now, let's talk about this rumor going around where we might be getting the 7th batch with the Kyoka, with the Mimi, etc. before the next CB. And so my dudes, what that means is that you need to hoard shards just all the way up until the CB actually starts. Because if we actually get the 7th batch, there are a couple of units here, a lot of units actually, that would require their CBs over the batch 6 one over here. So for example, uh, I would, from this batch, I would just like go for Jita and then potentially unlock like one of these three. Or if you have a lot of shards, you could unlock all of them. But what I do need to say is that if batch 7 is coming and you should just be holding onto the shards just in case it does, I would say you need to save to fully max out both unlock and max out Kyoka. You also want your Mimi because Mimi, not only is she cracked out in CB, but she's actually really freaking strong in PvP as well. So yeah, the Mimi high craft priority, medium level, yeah, I would say so, maybe even low level priority, just because there are like so many units that we do need to gear up with the UEs now. And so last of all, we have Ilya down here. Ilya, you guys already know what it is. Hopefully like Ilya, you aren't experiencing like the Ilya self kills. And so yeah, to sum up the advice, you are almost 100% going to be unlocking and maxing out Jita. Second thing is when we have a look at the batch seven and we're preparing for it, hold on to your hard shards and be prepared to unlock and max your Kyoka and also be prepared to unlock your Mimi as well as your Ilya. I would say that Kyoka is at the same priority as the Jita. So it's gotta be Jita, it's gotta be Kyoka. And then I would say the Mimi is probably at the same priority as Monica. However, if you're a CB player, Mimi is higher priority than Monica. And then just moving down, we got the Ilya as well, which uh, could certainly be a priority. And so yeah, that is it for batch six and potentially batch seven UEs. Hopefully that was kind of helpful. Like yeah, I just wanted to address those rumors because it is a very real possibility that we do get these uh, these batch seven UEs. All right, that's kind of it for the video. You already know what it is. You need to let me know, boys. You need to let me know, are you guys down bad for those princess shards? Because I thought I was good. I thought I was in the clear. I had about like 180 shards. And then I actually went ahead and equipped a couple. I put on the Monica one. As you can see, she's just got the level 30, just the first unlock. And then I put on the Jita one, where I actually went ahead and maxed out her entire unique equipment. And then I went to have a look at some of the other units. I was like, okay, well, what about Yuki? And then I looked at the amount of shards I had and I only have 111 left. Remember my boys, you need about 68 to not only unlock, but then also max out. So I need to save 68 for Kyoka. And then another 30 for Mimi, and then potentially like 30 plus 38 for Rin as well, because I don't have Rin. My guys, like every time I feel like I'm ahead of the game, I'm not. The game comes back and does like a, there's a Will Smith on me, you know what I'm saying? And so boys, let me know how you guys are going with your princess hearts. Clearly, I am down bad because clearly you guys saw I don't have the Ninon UE, I don't have the Nozomi UE, I don't have like 
I still don't have like half the UEs actually. My dudes, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving one, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. My boys, you already know the drill. Like, subscribe, and notification bells on. But otherwise, as your boy Yuki once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.